Okay, so at this point, I'm going to present my solution for um, our node shell exercise. Let me switch my screen here. So what I have here is empty script. I'm actually running this before. Let me kill this. So when I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into really three different parts. Um, so the way that I look at this workshop is that we've got three things that are going on. We've got some parsing going on to get our commands. You want to run our commands. And then we've got, let me actually be clear about this. We want to parse our commands. We want a command runner because we're not just going to run the commands, but we also want to be able to run the commands and uh, uh, pipe the results of one command into another command. And that's really the, a big ch a challenging part of this. I know uh, it sort of came on at the end of the workshop, but we know at this point, you know, look, going over this again, we know this is what we want so we can plan for it, I think, a little bit better. And then we have the actual commands themselves. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, instead of actually worrying about the console right now and that sort of thing, let's actually just do this. Uh, I'm just doing this here so that I could start testing this out. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in, um, uh, if I just type in node bash js, it would just out. Hello. Now, what I want this thing to do is to, to continually run. I'm going to say nodemon bash.js. And this will end up starting. Um, and I, I had done this on one of the lectures. I mean, this basically allows you to go in here and to keep on testing. Again, I'm not going to worry about the uh, getting the input from the console, whether I get it from the console or I hard code it right now, it's not going to make much of a difference. In fact, I'm going to wire that in at the end. So let's say that I had a command text that looked like this. And this is going to be, we'll say, echo foo bar baz. We'll put in a line break here and we'll say boo. And we'll go over here and we will. Now, grep, oh, well. And if you wanted to sort of look at this, what this would actually look like in a real bash shell, we could say uh, echo foo bar baz, line break, um, and this is going to be, ooh, we might have to put this in quotes, grep, ooh. And it tells us we've got two instances of this. I guess it sort of ignores the line break. So, you know, why don't we ignore the line break too? Um, and eventually we'll, we'll do this with a with a file, which will be a little bit more. So we're gonna, the first part is we're gonna do the parser. So I'm gonna create a function called parser. It's gonna input some text, or I'm gonna call some text with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, man strings equals text dot split I'm going to split it at the pipe character say console dot log command string so assume that we're going to be getting this from the command line uh, well I should say we're going to get it from our node shell by uh, having the user we're going to end up inputting this data at some point um, and so now we'll call our parser this command of text. And if we go back here to our node, command string is not defined. And that's because it's command strings. Now it runs and you can see it's splitting this down. Notice there's some extra spaces in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these command strings and I'm going to split them. Um, and these command strings, let me actually uh, rephrase that. So we've got our command strings, 
And what I'm going to do with these command strings, I'm going to map them, which means I'm going to turn each of these command strings into an element of an array. This is going to be a command string. There's really going to be two parts of these commands. Okay? If we just did this and I said return command string and we did console.log commands, we would find that we just have the same array that we started out with. What I want to do is I want to take that first parameter. And so uh, what I'm going to uh, do here, I'll say command string equals command string dot trim. This way I'll get rid of those spaces, which I do. Okay. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna return an object from here. And so I'm gonna return an object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now I've got each of my command strings, and I'm gonna break this out and say parts equals command string dot split, and I'm gonna split on a space. Right, that's what these basically are, it's spaces. The first thing that's gonna be here is your command. So when I return this, I'll say CMD. CMD is gonna be parts zero. And I'll say args equals parts dot slice one. So what I should have are these commands, and if I look at this, I'll see that I have these two commands. I've got the uh, arguments for echo, and I've got the arguments for grep. So this is a big part of, you know, parsing this out. And, you know, if you really, this would work out really well for, like, uh, test-driven development. If you wanted to create some object that did you parsing. Again, if you look at this function, there's not a ton that it's doing. It's got a very... Uh, simple job, right? Its job is to parse this command to basically give you command objects that you can then execute. So let's actually see how far we can go with this. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say um, command list. Let's actually put this up on the top. And I'm going to set my command list to this, and let me actually build an object for the command so we could actually start taking a look at it. So I've got two commands that I have here. I'm going to create a variable called commands, and I'm going to put in my commands um, echo, and I'm also going to put in grep. So now again, I. I could actually just look at this and go through these one by one, but I know a little bit about how this pipeline is going to end up working. Um, and the way that the pipeline is going to work is that I'm going to have some way of running all of these commands so that and the way that I'm going to set it up, um, I'm going to have a function that I'm going to call pipe. These commands don't do anything at this point, but I'm going to have this function called pipe. And when I call pipe, I'm going to pass in some input. So this is going to be a pipeline, and the input coming in would be whatever the input was for the last pipe. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to pop in here is going to be um, a input. I'm also going to pass in what would be a command object. And when I end up calling pipe, what I'm going to do, I'm going to specify and say um, uh, commands. In a bracket, I'm going to put commands. 
I've got my command, and again, the name of my command is command, right? So I'm gonna end up calling this function. And I'm gonna pass into this function my input, okay? So again, just sort of looking at this off the bat, here's my command list. So just for kicks, I could say uh, command list, Zero is one of my commands, and I could say I'm going to pipe this. And for my input, I'm just going to put nothing in here. So all I'm doing here is just showing you that I could, if I had this commands object with echo and with grep, I could call it with this um, uh, by calling this function pipe. And our first one is echo, so this is going to be... I call, when I end up calling this, I'm gonna end up passing in the input. I'm not doing anything with the input right now. All I'm gonna do right now is just say console.log, echo has been called. So unexpected token, and I think I'm missing probably a bracket here. So this is commands, and this is went a little bit too far here. Commands, command, CMD. I don't need those two sets of brackets. Okay. Uh, command list is my parser. And the reason why that's not doing anything is that even though I created my commands, I didn't return them. Okay. So here I, it says echo has been called. And here if I do one, I'll say console.log grep has been called. So what I really want to do is I want to call these things in succession. I want to call one after the other. And I want to display the results when I'm done. So this is, again, a little bit of, uh, little bit of engineering that's going on here. But what I really would like to do when I go and pipe this is that if I have my command list, I'm going to take my first command when I call this, and I'm going to shift it, right? So you have to remember, shift ends up shifting the guy off the array. This is going to be my first command that I end up calling. If I do this, I'll see the echo has been called. It's fine. So how does echo, how is it going to work? What else am I sort of missing here? So first of all, I want to be able to tell my, when, when my command ends up running, one of the things that I want to be able to do to it is I want to be able to pass in a done function. And the other thing with echo is that, uh, you know, I'm calling echo first here. So this, you know, in this case, there is going to be no input that's coming into to echo, right? There's nothing from a previous command. Now, there could be, but there just doesn't, happen to be. It's just not the way that it's working. I mean, you could sort of think about, would echo, would that even make any sense? If we go over here and say um, ls echo, it doesn't really even make any sense. With echo, it's more of just like that, and echo xxx. Is there an x in there? Sure. How about a uh, X or Y, does that work? Match is found, and it's probably because my regular expressions are not that, not that great. But um, uh, so, so here, echo doesn't really, it's not really gonna be um, uh, on, the, on the right side of any pipe, but still, we sort of wanna call these commands the same way every time. So with echo, input might always be null, or we might not be doing anything with that, that's great. But what I want to do here is that I do want to pass my arguments. And so when I end up calling this, I want to pass my arguments. And for me, I would like to pass these arguments individually. So that when I end up calling this command, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to set up a done function. A done function, the only thing that a done function gets is your 
result. And when I end up piping this, what I'm going to do is I have my uh, method that's going to be called. And what I'm going to do here is I have my command arguments. So in the front of my command arguments, I want my done to be the second thing in here. So I'm going to take my command, take the arguments, and I'm going to unshift. I'm going to put in the front of it my done method. And I'm going to unshift the input that comes in here. And I'm going to show you why I'm doing this in a second. So right now, what I've got is I've got an array. I've got my arguments at the end of the array. Or let's actually describe it differently. I've got an array where I've got some, could be some results from something else. I've got a done function. And I've got however many arguments are here. So in the case of our foobar badge, we would have something like this. Something along those lines. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to call this command, but I want to send these as arguments. I don't want to send them as an array. So I'm going to apply. Now, in this case, the context doesn't really mean anything to me. I don't really have an object. I'm not worried about the context. So I'm only using apply to call this method and to pass my array as separate arguments. So here, this doesn't, right now at least, it doesn't mean anything to me here. And I'm going to pass over my command.args. So now, if I was to go and look at echo has been called, which it will have been called, and I go and take a look and see how this is running. The echo has been called, but what if I actually want to go and I want to get the arguments here. So with echo, what I can do is I can say the text that I'm going to be echoing. And now I want to get, again, the way that this is passed, you can see that I'm going to get some input, which, again, is going to be uh, null for, um, for echo, because, again, echo is not going to be on the right side of the, of the pipe character. It's going to be on the left. Um, and so what I can do is I want to treat I want to find all that, the, the food bar and the bath. So just, a, you know, something else that you could see. I want to piece together. I do console.log arguments. I want to piece food bar, baz, and boo together and put their spaces back together because that's how they were split up. So one way to do that is I need to turn this into an array. But, you know, again, you notice that arguments is not an array. If I said arguments.push, I would see that it was undefined. But I could turn it into an array by saying array.prototype.slice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call slice, and I'm going to call slice on arguments, and I'm going to slice starting with two. And these are going to be my... Let's call this args, and let's just see that we can see the args. Again, once we get past this example, the other ones will actually go pretty fast. So here are my arguments that are coming through, and what I really want to do is say text equals args, and this is going to be, I want to join them with a space, and let's see what our text is. Okay. Now that's what our text is, and I have this done function, which is up here. And just for starters, I could say console.log result. That's not really what I want to do, is I want to use whatever I get back from here. Again, assuming that there's some more commands, I want to end up using those, um, you know, executing those other commands going through the pipeline. So I've got my done method. The echo one is pretty simple. I'm going to call done with text. And it's saying done is not a function. Let's see why. We've got 
Ah, I think my order is off here. Really need done. If I want it to go in that order, done needs to go first, and input needs to go second. Right? There's my function, and that's being called with done. But what I really want to do here is I want to just ask the question. If my command list dot length is equal to zero, then I'm going to say console.log result. Otherwise, what I'm going to end up doing is that I'm going to call pipe again. And I'm going to call pipe, and I'm going to end up passing pipe, where the first time we called pipe, we called it with a null value. But now I'm going to call it with result. I'm going to pass in done again. Let's put an else here. So I'm going to take my result. I'm going to use done. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to say my pass in. This is my command list dot shift. So looking at this, you can see this is the first time that it ended up getting called. And I'll show you a little trick. I could actually move this all the way up. The reason why this works, even though that it's on the top, is that functions end up getting hoisted. So this should work the same way. But what I'm going to do, so I, I go in here for the first time when this is called, but I have to sort of manually call pipe. I pass a null because it's the first command. I end up, you know, grabbing my command off this list. I call pipe with a, an input and a command. I pass done. I unshift the uh, input on it. And I end up applying it. And again, I want it to go in as separate parameters, so that's why I end up doing apply. Here's my array, here's my context, which really is not, is not at all critical here. So once I end up calling, uh, once done ends up coming in here, as long as my methods end up calling done, I'm gonna be in good shape here. So if I was to go over here and say done, again, this is gonna get an input, a done. In the case of our regular expression, that second parameter is going to be our search. We're going to create a regular expression with that. Um, uh, we're going to end up creating a regular expression with that search command. Again, if you looked at this, this would be our search command up here. So we're grepping the OO. So if I end up doing this and I call done, just for kicks, if I just you know pass back that search term, what you would see, I read property echo of undefined, so let's actually figure that out. So we're calling done with our text. Let's actually see the line that we're at. So on line 32. Cannot call, cannot read property echo of undefined. So what's undefined? Commands, command, command. Let's actually go over here. Oh, I'm, you know what, I, I screwed up, I apologize. So when I end up calling pipe, as I did before, I'm just sending in my command, and when I call pipe, it ends up, um, you know, adding um, done, and it ends up adding the input. So, still giving me an error here. Let's try to figure out why. Input done. Oh, what is, feels like, feels like I broke something. I read echo of undefined. Why is that? Where that's happening.
So there's hello. I go down to this line. I only go through there once. Look at this is going to be command. There's echo. Why does it think that? Ah, you know what it is? Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd say I totally screwed myself up. When you could end up, so functions end up getting hoisted, but just regular declarations don't end up getting hoisted. So I sort of outsmarted myself here. Let's put our variable that we have, put it right up here. And now we should be in better shape. Let me get rid of our clean this up a little bit. So, you know, right now our grep is not really doing what it's supposed to do. We can get our grep to do what it's supposed to do. And we can, you know, fine tune this a little bit. Right now I'm just going to basically get the, um, what would be the matches for our regular expression. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our input. I'm actually going to create a regular expression in JavaScript, rejects equals new, regular expression. And I'm going to do it with the search term. And the second parameter is, you know, how many, if you want it to be global, if you want it to find all these. So what you could do here is say uh, search dot uh, match. I think it's match, but I could all, I'll check that out. Uh, search dot match our regular expression. And if we didn't do all that much regular expression, we'll end up doing a bit more of it. But if I go to run that, so this is telling me that it was able to find those two O's, although it should find more than one of them. Let's make sure I do that correctly. So let's see what happens here. Um, so in the shell, if we say uh, echo foo bar baz ooh, and we say grep, right, it's got two of those. So let me just figure out why it's not finding both of these. Uh, let's do a quick search over here. We'll say uh, regular expression, JavaScript, matches. So here's our other expression. So it should be finding it globally. Let me see if I set that up correctly. Here's my regular expression, my flags. G should be global. For some reason, it looks like it's only finding the first one. Um, all right, we'll have to take a look at this. I mean, that's a little bit of the way there. It's a lot more interesting, by the way, if we end up doing this with a with files and that sort of thing. So here, again, whether or not it's doing exactly what you want it to do, if we look at our command here, we could also, when we are done here in our pipeline, it's not just console log the result, let's actually console log the, what do we call it, uh, command text. So again, we've got to, I've got to find out why that second match is not going through, but let's do something a little bit more interesting anyway. Let's say that we were going to actually read a file. So I've got a list of um, uh, presidents, and let's change our command. We'll actually make it even a little bit simpler here. And we'll do um, over here, and for our command text, I feel confident that my pipeline is going to work. Let's do a cat of presidents.txt. 
Um, and this is going to, of course, blow up because there's no method there. So let's actually do a test whenever we go to pipe. Whenever our commands end up running here, let's just do a quick test and say if commands dot, uh, if you can't find this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically say at this point, I'm going to actually wipe out my command list. I'll go over here and I'll say, um, I'm going to call done. And I'm going to say the command plus command.cmd is not valid. At this point, I'm calling done and I'm sort of saying we're done here. And just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to return this just so that I like doing that. It just allows me to not have another else here. I don't know, style-wise, you might like it, you might not. So I end up getting that command. Let me actually do the cat command. The cat command, I'm going to use the fs equals require fs. And so for my cat command, what I'm going to do is that, in this case, let's assume that I have a file that's coming in here. So now this, again, this is the one that's going to be, um, this is the command that is going to be reading from a file. It's going to be asynchronous. So I'm going to say fs read file. I'm going to end up reading the file. Here I've got this asynchronous method. This asynchronous method is either going to get some data, and that data is normally going to come back as a stream. The UTF-8 here, which I know that these are text files, or at least I think they are, and I could just grab the data back. And what I'm going to do when I'm done here is I'm going to say if not error done with data. So this should end up reading my file. So if I went over here and there's my file of my presidents, let's actually just see how this in the real world this works. If I say cat presidents, if that works, if I say cat presidents, Say cat again afterwards. Okay, that also works, right? So basically, that'll end up piping back in. So what I'm going to do here is that, in the case of pipe command like this, I'm going to go in here, and again, so what this says is that, hey, look, read the file, and then we're going to pass it in. And the uh, shell is smart enough to say, hey, look, if there's incoming data, this is what I'm going to end up piping out here with the cat command. Um, and uh, again, it's basically cat for concatenating the results. So in this case, I'm going to say if there's an input coming in here, I'm going to do this just to say return done input. So that I'm handling two cases here. I'm handling the case where um, the, uh, the data is coming, the, the cat is on the right-hand side, and the data where I'm basically specifying a file. So now here I should end up getting those same I do. And to make it interesting, why don't we say, okay. So what head is going to do is that if we just did head, again, we could look at this in the node shell. If we just did head presidents, it's going to give us the, by default, it gives us the first 10 lines. Um, we can do that. And 
and maybe there's a flag that I'm just not using here. But what I'm going to do here is for ours, we're just going to have head give us five values. So I'm going to copy this cat command. Instead of cat, it's going to be head. It's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do here is a little bit different here. I'm going to create this function here called process. And what I end up calling process, I'm going to pass in some data. Okay? And what I'm going to do, this is going to be the lines of the file. So I'm going to say lines equals data dot split by a line break. And I'm going to slice from that 0 to 5, the first five lines, and then I'm going to join them back by a line break. So the way that this is going to work here is that, again, when I call head and I'm passing some data in here, Right? I don't actually have to read from a file because I'll have my data. It'll be end up getting piped in. And so I'm going to say process input. Otherwise, when I call done, I'm going to say process data. So for head, and again, this is the sort of a little bit more complex here. I'm saying cat presidents read the whole file and then give, just give me the first five lines. I go back here, getting back undefined, that doesn't look right. So, uh, and the reason why I'm getting back undefined is I have my lines here, but I'm not returning them. In which case, now I've got my first five lines. I could also go over here and basically do the exact same thing with tail. So that if I was to say cat residence.text tail, go up here. Now I'm going to, instead of actually slicing off the first five lines, so slice has an interesting thing where if I say minus five, it'll end up starting from zero and it'll end up just getting me the last five elements that are in the array. Again, this will work the exact same way. So if I was to say go up here and say tail, I should get the last five lines in the, in the file. And there might be something here with, it looks like it's only getting four of the presidents. I, again, I don't know if there's a line break in the file that it's considering, um, but again, we could always end up you know, fixing that at some point. So right now we've got this working with uh, head, cat, and tail, and again, you know, if you wanted to do this with, um, Add presidents, grep, Obama. You can see that Obama's, you know, ideally what I would like to do, and I'll do this at some point, is to actually show the line where that file is on, but for the moment, that's just, you know, we can go in and fix that, fix that function a little bit. Um, what I want to do here in the, I don't have a ton of time here, so I want to, uh, modify this and say, instead of my commands coming in like this, I'm going to say commands equals require dot slash commands. And the second I do that, it breaks because you can't find commands. And I'm going to go back and grab my commands. This is a big chunk of our file here. I'm going to say modify add commands.js. I'm going to paste this in here. Now, I know I'm going to need, well, let's assume I don't know it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say 
here's my object, and I'll say module.exports equals commands. So that's going to make this commands object available. And if I go back here, I'll find a mod, uh, an error, can't find commands. Let's try to figure out why, because instead of calling it commands, I call it command. Now, I've got another problem because here's, so these modules are independent of each other. So if you want to have the FX module, you've got to require it. Now this works the same way. We've separated things out so that, you know, we're sort of breaking things down a little bit. Now we can actually even go one step further here. On our commands, let's also thing that's doing our for us, and we can say something like parser equals require parser. It's just to be a little bit different here. Um, I'm going to take this guy and Paste this in, and I'm going to say module.exports equals parser. And frankly, you could put this, if you wanted to, you could put it on the top because, again, functions are um, functions end up getting uh, hoisted anyway. So what this is going to do is now I've got this parser here. Again, it's pretty independent. It takes a string and it parses it out to these objects. Now that I have this parser, this command could actually work the exact same way. This parser in itself is going to be a function. That's the only thing that I'm exporting. Uh, I cannot find parser, and the reason why I can't find it, since it's mine, you have to do the dot slash, and now that works as well. So we've got the parser. We've got the commands that are broken down. Um, and we could even go in here. And when we end up, let's see, we could end up piping our command list. And this one will, for, the, for now, we'll actually keep this in the, in the file, in this main batch file. At some point, we could think about taking it out. Now, in order to actually do this in the way that we had in the workshop, Copy and paste a little bit here. Um, so, again, I don't use this sort of reading in data from the command line too often, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. And we're going to go in here. One moment. My cheat. So what I'm going to end up doing here is that when this starts, I'm going to uh, write this out. And when I go to um, when I get my data, my command list is going to be again. I can do this pretty much the same way, data to string, it's going to parse it out. And then I'm going to end up calling pipe with my command list. Right? And that's going to basically go through all the commands. And if this works, the other thing that I want to do here is that when I am done, I'm going to not console.log, but eventually, So if I'm done, I'm going to want to put my prompt back there again, but I'm also going to man text is already going to be there. I don't need to do that, but I'm just going to help with the result. Do things like if I didn't miss something here, invalid data. Usually that's a result of the fact that 
let's see, the result that I'm getting, let's see where it's looking at that error, line 17, which is right here. So depending on what the data is that's coming back to string, should probably solve that. Um, And let's see, I'm sure I'm going to have a console.log here that I don't necessarily need. Or in my command, possibly. Let's see, what is my parser? Come down here. Ah, I know what's going on. So what I neglected to do here is that my command list is not going to be set at the beginning. And the way that I'm going to end up getting my command list is that I'm going to get my command list dynamically from the user, and I'll start my process. So that should solve that problem. Uh, can read shift if undefined, and that's probably because I'm attempting to pipe something out. That doesn't make any sense. That was good when I was testing, but now I have my prompt, so I can cat presidents.txt. Uh, let's see, parse is not defined, and that's because it's called parser. I did an earlier version, and I called it parse. So this is going to be my parser. And then I could say, I could go in here and type uh, cat presidents txt, or I could say cat presidents txt tail. And let's just take a quick look at that. That doesn't look right. Cat presidents. Let's see if head works. So head works. Let's actually see what's going on with tail. And I think for my, um, I go to write this out. I think that there was something else that was going on in our lecture so that we were getting our data. We were trimming it. I don't know if that's what the problem is. Let's just take another quick look. I think it started us off there. So we could say cat presidents. Data trim is not a function. That's correct. So it gets the I think you're dealing with a stream here. So you can say data to string, trim, cat presidents.txt, cat presidents.txt, head. And that works. Again, I want, I'd like that prompt to go on the next line. So when I go back here, backslash and there. And presidents.txt head cat presidents.txt tail. Yeah, so that seemed to take care of that issue. Um, again, I think it has to do with the fact that when you're using the prompt, there's a line break that goes in there, and that could also have been uh, screwing me up there. Um, and again, I, you, I can see that I'm only getting four results, but we can always fix that up. I think I also have a file called uh, Super Bowls. We could wrap the Giants at Super Bowls text prep the Knicks doesn't look quite right oh, that's gonna I'm gonna have to fix that up a little bit I think the ones that are sort of the most uh, interesting anyway are the 
head and the tail. And again, just so some of these methods I'm going to have to fix up, figure out, get my graph working a little bit better, which I'll do. Um, the main thing is, I think, the whole process, which is the whole idea that you can break this up into a parser. And here, this would be the equivalent of our runner here, where we've got our done, which is going to take into account our pipeline, our command list. When we call pipe, we're passing this data on it. If we can't find it, we output this message. Otherwise, we go in here and we apply it with these, with these arguments. So again, I, I think the big takeaway here is getting comfortable with Node, doing module exports, knowing that you can sort of isolate your code. Um, I think that there's an engineering component of breaking down the tasks that you have. Again, the way that I see them is that you have this runner, which I'm sort of keeping in my batch file. We've got our commands, which need to be fleshed out a little bit. The grep doesn't seem to be working quite right. And we've got our parser, which again is a big part of this, and and you could really, um, you know, get this, uh, you know, fine tune it by uh, focusing on these individual parts. So that's going to do it for about this. Let me.